Hello, my name is Shiloh Sweeney, and today I will be discussing sepsis in the elderly. In this presentation, I hope to accomplish the following. Provide a clear definition of sepsis. Explain the effects of sepsis on the elderly and its effects on the different body systems. Define both modifiable and non-modifiable factors. Define a treatment plan for sepsis. Explain primary, secondary, tertiary rehabilitation services. Explain how technology and informatics can help the treatment plan for sepsis. So what is sepsis? Sepsis is an overwhelming immune response to an infection. When a local inflammatory response becomes systemic, capillaries become more permeable and fluid and immune mediators are released. This response can cause hypotension and can, call, and can compromise blood flow to vital organs and tissues. When there is a systemic inflammatory response, it is called SIRS. And with the presence of an infection, it is sepsis. Let's further define sepsis and SIRS. Sepsis is categorized as sepsis, severe sepsis, and septic shock. Sepsis is when you have SIRS in the presence of infection. And SIRS is when two or more of the following are present. Body temperature of less than 36 degrees Celsius or greater than 38. Heart rate greater than 90. Respiratory rate greater than 20 or a PaCO2 less than 32, a white blood count of less than 4,000 or greater than 12,000, or when you see a greater than 10% of immature neutrophils. In severe sepsis, you will see organ dysfunction and hypoperfusion abnormalities. And in septic shock, you will see hypotension despite the fluid resuscitation. And if you notice in the picture, you'll see a good illustration of how SIRS and infection are related to sepsis. Did you know that approximately 28% of hospital mortality rate is because of sepsis and that the incidence of mortality is highest among the elderly? Individuals over 65 years are five times more likely to have an infection to be classified as severe sepsis and elderly African Americans have an even higher incidence of sepsis than Caucasians. A higher incidence is also found in the male population, however women do typically have a higher mortality rate with sepsis. It is important to understand sepsis in the elderly as well as the normal physiological changes in those over the age of 65. The normal physiological changes can be affected by sepsis and can play a role in the susceptibility of the elderly in developing sepsis. I think it is important to first start with the immune system when discussing sepsis. The immune system is responsible for protecting the body against microorganisms. As we age, the immune system declines and can contribute to infections such as sepsis. The elderly have a noticeably decline in cell-mediated and humoral immune responses. In the immune system, the T lymphocytes work to destroy antigens. The B lymphocytes are responsible for eliminating bacteria, neutralizing bacterial toxins, preventing viral infections, and producing immediate inflammatory responses. The macrophages are responsible for recognizing and engulfing foreign materials and initiating an immune response. The T and B lymphocytes functions decrease and the macrophage activity increases as we age. This can cause the elderly to develop infections even with a small exposure to microorganisms. <clears throat> the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal or HPA axis is a group of endocrine glands responsible for many regulatory mechanisms. Immunological stressors, such as infections, can activate the HPA axis to provoke a release of glucocorticoids. There is a natural dysregulation of the HPA axis, as well as a decrease in immunological effectiveness among the elderly. This has revealed a dysregulation in the cellular and humoral immune markers in the elderly. Inflammation-related dysregulation of the HPA axis is central to the cause of sepsis. In response to systemic inflammation, glucocorticoid production plays a role in neutralizing the hyperactivation of the immune response. This activation and production of glucocorticoids can be impaired in the critically ill septic patient. Due to the dysregulation of the HPA axis and the glucocorticoid production, elderly patients have a decreased immune response and can be more susceptible to sepsis. In the healthy aging individual, the brain continues to function normally, but there is, however, a decrease in nerve cell production and conduction in the elderly. 
The autonomic nervous system is less efficient and leads to a slower recovery from stressors such as sepsis in the elderly. Old age and underlying infections can cause delirium. After the age of 65, individuals are at a higher risk for developing delirium once hospitalized. Sepsis can also lead to delirium and confusion due to the possible buildup of cerebral toxins, direct neural disruption, hypotension, and the decreased cardiac output due to the disruption of intracerebral blood flow. When it comes to the respiratory deviations in the elderly, the changes are fairly trivial. Vital capacity, maximum ventilation rate, and gas exchange all decrease with age, but these changes are largely negated due to the large reserve capacity in the respiratory system. The elderly patients are, however, less able to tolerate hypoxia. Older individuals are at a higher risk for developing respiratory infections such as bronchitis, pneumonia, flu, and ARDS. Respiratory infections are the most common cause of sepsis in the elderly. Not only are respiratory infections often the cause of sepsis, but sepsis can cause lung injury. Diffuse alveolar damage is caused by the inflammatory response during sepsis due to the presence of endotoxins in the bloodstream. The inflammatory response in sepsis leads to the disruption of the alveolar walls and causes fluid leakage. If left untreated, it can lead to pulmonary edema and ARDS. Similar to the respiratory system, there are significant cardiovascular changes associated with sepsis. As the immune response evolves, myocardial depression is noticeable and causes a decrease in cardiac output. A decrease in cardiac output leads to hypoperfusion and causes an increase in lactic acid production, which can act as a myocardial depressant. There is a higher risk of cardiovascular events in sepsis survivors. This may be due to the presence of comorbidities. The older population are more susceptible to cardiovascular events and sepsis. As we move forward to the digestive system, the liver is the most severely affected by the aging process. The liver is responsible for metabolizing medications. Advancing age can restrict the detoxification of medication by as much as 30% from adulthood. This is extremely important to realize in the elderly septic patient. Without adequate liver perfusion, medications cannot be metabolized. Sepsis not only causes liver dysfunction, but medications used to treat sepsis can often be hepatotoxic. Advancing age also has its effects on the genitourinary system. Renal mass and GFR are decreased in the elderly. Urological problems are often common in the older individual. Urinary tract infections are more common and there is also a higher risk for septic shock in the elderly. Septic shock can then in turn contribute to acute kidney injury. When it comes to the musculoskeletal system, sepsis has no significant effect. There is, however, changes related to the aging process. Bone loss and osteoporosis is more common in the elderly. This leads to an increased risk for, the bone, for bone fractures. This is important to realize since we've already discussed that sepsis can cause confusion, which can lead to more frequent falls. Fall prevention must be implemented for these patients to avoid injury and further complications. Now that we have discussed sepsis and its effects on the body systems, let's move forward and discuss modifiable and non-modifiable factors. It is important to realize what you can affect and what you cannot affect when it comes to sepsis. Immunity is one modifiable factor. It can be boosted by vaccine administration. Immunizations such as the pneumonia and flu vaccine can play a major role in decreasing the elderly's risk for sepsis. According to the CDC, approximately 1.1 million hospitalizations and more than 50,000 deaths are caused by pneumonia. And individuals older than the age of 65 have a five times higher death rate associated with pneumonia. Due to the fact that pneumonia is the most common cause of severe sepsis, the pneumonia vaccine program is the largest for adults. Those over 65 years old are considered to be high risk and the pneumonia vaccine is recommended. Comorbidities such as hypertension are another modifiable factor. Hypertension is more common in the elderly African American than in the Caucasian elderly. African Americans tend to have uncontrollable 
hypertension, and experience more hypertension-related complications. African Americans over the age of 65 with hypertension present with a higher percentage of SIRS and sepsis. Environmental influences and health behaviors play a role in the incidence of hypertension in the African American. These factors can be modified through better health and lifestyle choices. However, hereditary and gene expression, as well as advancing age, cannot be modified. Gene expression and polymorphisms are more prevalent in the African American and are associated with infection pathways that can cause an increased susceptibility of sepsis. Now that we know what sepsis is and how it affects the body, how do we treat it? The Surviving Sepsis Campaign is a joint collaboration of the Society of Critical Care Medicine and the European Society of Intensive Care Medicine committed to reducing mortality from severe sepsis and septic shock worldwide. The Surviving Sepsis Campaign developed guidelines and bundles for hospitals in hopes to decrease sepsis mortality. According to the Surviving Sepsis Campaign, you must do the following within three hours. Measure lactate levels, obtain blood cultures, administer broad-spectrum antibiotics, fluid resuscitation of 30 mL per kilogram of crystalloid for hypotension or lactate greater or equal to 4. Within 6 hours, you must administer vasopressors to maintain a mean arterial pressure of greater than or equal to 65. Reassess volume status and tissue perfusion for persistent hypotension after fluid administration or if the initial lactate level was greater than or equal to 4, and re-measure lactate if initial lactate was elevated. This concept map shows a condensed version of sepsis and nursing diagnosis related to sepsis. As nurses, it is important to identify and intervene early in sepsis. Sepsis is related to infection and often caused by pneumonia in the elderly. It can lead to impaired gas exchange and altered tissue perfusion. A risk for fluid volume deficit and decreased cardiac output can lead to hypotension and organ dysfunction. Nursing interventions are crucial and include, but not limited to, monitoring of vitals and labs. Rehabilitation services such as primary, secondary, and tertiary services are often necessary for the sepsis patient. For those that do survive sepsis, they tend to have a poor quality of life and develop cognitive and functional disabilities and often require a considerable amount of acute and long-term care. Primary rehabilitation services include those provided from acute care facilities, often in critical care units. Early recognition and intervention is crucial during this stage. Monitoring of vital signs for tachypnea, tachycardia, hypotension, fever, and decreased urine output is important. Interventions such as fluid and antibiotic administration, Supplemental O2 and or mechanical ventilation is often necessary during this stage of care. After primary rehabilitation services are complete, secondary services at a skilled nursing facility or rehab facilities may be necessary for functional rehabilitation or further IV antibiotic therapy. Once this is complete, sometimes further rehabilitation services are often needed such as home health or hospice. So how can we detect sepsis early? Technology and informatics can play a role. Electronic medical records and clinical surveillance software can provide real-time pictures of potential risk to the patient. It can also empower clinicians with knowledge to improve outcomes, strengthen regulatory compliance, and often lower costs at the same time. These programs can accurately and automatically identify issues such as sepsis, provide immediate, actionable information, simplify reporting, and support clinician workflows. Combining electronic medical records with clinical surveillance software can help detect sepsis early and may improve outcomes for our patients. Thank you for your time.